So we've got our Apex. Hi, I'm Darren. Hi, I'm Gordon. And, and we're, we're the Two Gay, gay Reapers. Hey Reapers, today it's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas, even though it's only February. Only February. And that is because we recently got lights for the Red Sea Reefer over there. Check out the video up here from uh, the couple of weeks ago. But more and importantly, and we got ourselves a Neptune Apex. Woohoo! So this bad boy, obviously, is going on Reef Sealer. Reef Sealer has been coming along as a really, uh, really maturing as a, as a tank over the last few uh, months and we've been seeing some issues that we just couldn't work out what was going wrong. Our perimeters were right, we were continuously doing uh, water tests, corals were looking really, really good and then literally overnight they would die. So we're talking about mainly acro corals here too. So we were getting a few um, rescue corals as we like to call them. So one's donated to us from either other hobbyists or, or Nick, our sponsor. Thank you, Nick. And it was a good thing that we were doing that too because we were really trying to fine tune everything about Reefzilla and get it back on track to make it a stunning show tank. So and that's what we want. We want it to be a showpiece, uh, not, just, not just for us to see every day, but for you guys to check out and be proud of the tank. Mm -hmm. So we were nearly getting there, nearly getting there. You could see Everything looked right, but I knew something was off. Acros were just stripping from the base, and it wasn't all of them either. Some of them held on, others just like, chunk, disappeared. So we've got our Apex. We put it on what? About two weeks ago? About two Roughly weeks two ago. Weeks ago. Yep. We set it all up. We didn't shoot a video while we were setting it up, which we probably regret now because we <laughs> rushed and got it done. We didn't film it. So the good thing about the Apex though is it doesn't really need a setup video, to be honest. It is literally plug and play. You visit the website, it tells you to download the app, you make an account on the app, and it tells you plug the power board into the hub, and then start plugging stuff in, and it shows you exactly what to do. The whole process of setting up, I think it took us no more than an hour. Yeah. Maybe an hour and a half, and that includes mounting the brackets onto the wall behind us. So. We mounted that on the wall, hooked everything up, so hooked up the four probes that come with four it. Probes. So with the Australian version of the Apex, we only have six. I was trying to do six with one hand, that wasn't gonna work. We only have six uh, power points. He can math, I can math. <laughs> so because we operate on 240 volts over here, we have the old style power board, and at the moment, they're not looking at actually doing a 240 volt upgrade to eight sockets. Obviously here in Australia, we run a 240 volt instead of the US 110 volt. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they trust us more. Yeah. Sorry, Americans. <laughs> so we still have our old power board on the side of the tank, but we've also got what's on the Apex as well. So we had to actually be quite picky and choosy about what we wanted to put on the Apex and what we did. That's right, we wanted to put things on there that were controlled or needed to be controlled automatically without us being there. But yeah, so we chose not to put stuff on there that already was controllable by apps. So the lights, we did chose not to put those on there Same because the we've got Mobius. So Definitely Mobius, up, yeah. Ecotech, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> we've got plugged in there the return pump. Return pump. And the skimmer. We've done that so we can have a feed mode. So when, when Darren feeds the tank in the morning of a night time, he hits the feed mode on the Apex app, shuts down the return pump, shuts down the skimmer, and then returns on in what? Five minutes, 10 minutes? 30 what? minutes at the moment. 30 minutes, there you go. 30 minutes is a good length of time for the corals to be able to consume food. Yep, and we've still got the flow happening through the tanks with the two power heads at the moment as well. On the Apex, we also have an air stone. We run that through our media. We put the air stone on for 12 hours at a time, 12 hours on, 12 hours off, and that just aerates it to get different types of bacteria growing in it. And then we've got the uh, two power points uh, there to run the two heaters that we operate. We've got a backup heater and a main heater. 
tank is mainly controlled by the air conditioning and we've never gone down the point of putting a chiller on the system. The room that, that, that we're sitting in now, the main living room of our house is, is air conditioned pretty much 24 seven. The main reason for that is it keeps us happy, keeps the dogs happy, but also keeps the tank at the right temperature. Even with our really, really hot summers we get here in Queensland. Also, we thought. So that brings us to the main thing we've found already we had a little digital thermometer on the tank. It was a cheap $20 thermometer that we brought from a local fish shop a couple of years ago. We assumed it was right, we assumed it was doing what it's meant to do. Every time we looked at it, it was sitting at about 25 degrees. And we all know what happens when you assume it makes an ass out of you and me. <laughs> Especially us. First thing is we plugged in the temperature probe and straight away we're going, oh, that's a bit high. That's a bit weird. We found out that our digital thermometer was actually two degrees out. So, so it was doing two re degrees reading, cooler. Yeah, reading two degrees cooler than it was actually reading. So when we thought it was at 25 degrees, it was actually at 27 degrees. Uh, I'm sure Darren will put here what the conversion is to Fahrenheit for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Basically our tank was getting up to 28, 29 degrees on some days. And we noticed there was huge temperature swings of about two to three degrees per day. So, we've got two heaters on there. We've got one that kicks on just under 25 degrees, which is where we want to keep it. And we've got one that's set a bit lower, so if it does happen to go down lower than that, it helps it bring it up faster to 25 degrees. So, already by correcting that issue, the Apex has stabilised the tank. We are actually seeing a lot of polyp extension happening on some of the acros, they're looking happier, we're getting some colour back. So we're also dosing A and B Reef Energy from Red Sea, which is also making the tank look happier as well. We're seeing sort of ne nearly instant results out of that. Uh, within a couple of days, within a couple of doses, the colours were starting to pop more, the corals were just well, looking they're, happier. They're coming back from brown and actually showing colour, so yay for that. <laughs> And we've got one power point left over, which we're going to use for the reactor. So the next big thing that we're going to put onto the Apex is our calcium reactor. Now we won this last year at Reefstock. It's been a long time trying to set it up. We'll have more on that on a video later. But we've got a pH probe. We've only got one at the moment, so we'll probably need to get a second one so we can do the tank and the calcium reactor but we're going to put the calcium reactor online with the pH probe and we're just going to do it nice and gentle to start with. At the moment we've got the calcium reactor just going with water through the media. Obviously the tank's not consuming a lot of alkalinity, it's not consuming a lot of calcium. So even without having the CO2 running through the calcium reactor, uh, our, our parameters have been pretty stable. We're going to put the CO2 online for little bits at a time and slowly increase that. So we're not going to give Reefseller too much of a shock. Yeah. So we'll put that online today and we'll go through it with you guys. So, first things first, we need to take out the pH probe that we've got in the sump and put it into the calcium reactor. So which one's the pH probe? So, we'd forgotten, it's the blue one. Thank you, Google. If all else fails, ask Google. That's right. So pH probe goes out. So our cables are a little bit of a mess at the moment because we did set up in a bit of a rush. So one of our jobs this weekend will be actually to clean up this uh, cable mess a little bit. So we're plugging in the pH probe into the pH probe spot, <laughs> for lack of better terms, on the calcium reactor. This calcium reactor was the one that we won at Reefstock. It is the, what is the brand? Liquid Oasis. Uh, they call it the Coral Composter. So we've gone onto the app, we now have the pH at 7.88, so that's what the calcium reactor is running at at the moment. So basically what we're gonna do is slowly bring it down over a, a week, two weeks, a month or so, just till we get it to operating. Uh, so the good thing about this uh, calcium reactor is it's basically a big bin full of media with just water rushing through it. It doesn't need to be very acidic in there to actually be able to uh, produce results. So we're gonna just take it really nice and slow so there's no big sudden drops. When we go onto the pH settings on 
the actual app. It has uh, the name, so you can change the name, PH Calc. Oh, PH Cal, that'll do. So that's just renaming it, so we'll save that. go into the last one that we've got remaining the last outlet is 2.5 so we're renaming this value 7.89 now so that's the base of what we want it to actually like don't want any higher than that high and then turn off when it's low So on the dashboard we have to turn the calcium reactor on and the solenoid clicked on. So it's working. The <laughs> CO2's kicked in, it's gone down a couple of points which is nice so we're waiting to see if it actually kicks off at the right level. But as you can see we're newbies with this technology, we really don't know what we're doing. We're making it up as we go along. It's both calcium reactors and apex style controllers. Yep. Having a look at what we've got plugged into our apex and what's actually left on the power board, let us know if we've made the right decisions. If you've got any suggestions about what we can plug into the apex and program, let us know in the comments down below. If you know any good resources that we can look at on how to program Apexes as well, good beginner guides, let us know down below. But I'm quite proud. We've done some good for Resila and hopefully things will keep getting better from here. If you've enjoyed today's video, like, comment and subscribe. Like, comment and subscribe. Like, comment and subscribe. And as always, be excellent to each other and keep it salty. See you guys. Bye for now. Oh! <laughs>